Kraft presents The Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> the Kraft Cheese Company, who also bring you Bing Crosby every Thursday night, present each week at this time, Harold Perry as The Great Gildersleeve, written by Leonard L. Levinson. Now let's visit our friend, the great Gildersleeve. Tonight we find him celebrating the first of the month in his customary fashion, paying bills, counting out Bertie's salary, and making allowances for Marjorie and Leroy. Uh, Marjorie, uh, Bertie, Leroy... Call me, Uncle Mort. Yes, here I am, Miss Gilfleet. Well, such promptness. I'll bet you know what's on my mind. I do. This is the first of the month. It's pay night for me. Yeah, pay night. That's right. How did you remember? Because I got four or five installment gentlemen who won't let me forget. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Say, we collect our allowances, too, Marjorie. Don't forget, you owe me that 60 cents you borrowed. That was 50 cents. 50 cents and a dime interest, sis. 50 cents and that's all, brother. Uh... Gee, I... I was counting on that extra dough. Leroy, you're not in the hawk again, are you? Why, Uncle Mort, I don't know what you mean. Oh, you know, in the red. Oh, that's me you think of, Mr. Gillsleeve. Huh? I'm so deep in the red, my friends have quit calling me Bertie. I'm now known as Robin. Yes. <laughs> well, here's your salary, Robin. Uh, Reuben. Uh, Bertie. <laughs> uh, minus the advances I gave you during the past month, of course. Uh, thank you, sir. Mm-mm. I certainly advanced myself to a standstill. Yeah. <laughs> well, you've got one consolation, Bertie. Uh, February is going to be a short month. Ain't that the truth? Yeah. Well, I wouldn't be any short if I stood in the hole, and that's what I was in. <laughs> <laughs> I hate February anyhow. All I get is Valentine's from the finance company. <laughs> well, here's your monthly allowance, Marjorie. Thank you. And here's yours for the week, Leroy. Say, why can't I get mine for the whole month like Marge does, Unc? I'm not a kid anymore. How about it, Unc, huh? Well, for the month, huh? Well, we can try it out. Nothing ventured, nothing uh, ventured. <laughs> yes, here you are. Gee, thanks. And here's something for you. If for me? What's this? My bill for services rendered during j- January. It's just January, yes. Well, <laughs> let me see. A bill? Uh, stopping at the post office five times at a dime per stop, 50 cents. Uh, going to the store 12 times at five cents per go, 60 cents. <laughs> The three hot dogs for Uncle Mort at the basketball game, 30 cents. Young man, I thought you were treating me. Only the first two times, Unc. After that, it was strictly Dutch. Yeah. <laughs> well, you can't beat the Dutch. <laughs> yeah. Removing ashes from furnace, 20 cents. Spreading ashes on sidewalk, uh, 15 cents for labor, 10 cents for ashes. Uh, my ashes, too. <laughs> Rental of my bike to Uncle Mort, 10 cents. Repairing bent frame, 95 cents. Young man, I should charge you for my bent frame. (laughs) Uh, Total, $2.90. Well, here you are, Leroy. Thank you, Uncle. You're welcome. Sometimes when I see how you itemize every little household charge, I wonder if it was smart to teach you about business. Other times, I wonder if it was necessary. Well, I guess I'll go to bed now. Goodbye, Marjorie. What? I, I mean, good night. Good night, Bertie. Good night. Good night, Uncle Mort. Uh, well, just a second, Leroy. Come back here, young man. Let me see your tongue. Hello, Pete. Yes. Oh, it seems all right. Are you feeling well? Oh, yes, yeah, sure. Swell. Can I go to bed now? I guess so. Good night, my boy. Well, then, good night, Unc. Good night, Marge. Good night. Good night, Bertie. Good, yeah. night. good night, my boy. What's the trouble, Uncle Mort? Is that clock right? Yes. Something's wrong, either with the clock or Leroy. This is the first time in a year that he's gone to bed when he was supposed to without any arguments. I tell you, Marjorie, I don't like it. Well, good morning, Bertie. Good morning. Well, isn't Leroy up yet? No, sir, Mr. Gillsleeve. I ain't seen hiding a hair of him this morning. Oh, well, it's time he was up for school. I better call him. Uh, Leroy! Uh, that's funny. Uh, still asleep, the little rascal. Hey, come on, Leroy, get out of the hay before... Uh, where is he? Ooh, a note to Uncle Mort. Oh, uh, Marjorie! What is it, Uncle Mort? Uh, come in here, Leroy's gone and left a note. Oh, what does it say, Uncle? 
Listen, uh, dear Uncle Mort and Marjorie, I don't want you two to worry, but I'm going away for a while. What? I just couldn't stand it here any longer. Please don't worry about me because I'll be all right. Oh, I can't believe it. Oh, I'll take care of myself and write you soon, so be sure and don't worry. Also tell Bertie not to worry either. Yours truly, Leroy. Uh, P.S. Please feed my frogs while I'm gone. Uh, P.S. number two. The frogs like flies. Uncle Mort, what's going to happen? Now, stop that, Marjorie. You mustn't cry. We'll have him back safe and sound in no time. There's nothing to worry about. How do you know? It says so right here in his letter. <laughs> Excuse me, but I got breakfast waiting. Where's Leroy? Oh, Bertie, it looks like he's run away from home. Who, Leroy? Why, I don't believe it. It's just one of that boy's impractical jokes. Yeah, I don't think so, Bertie. He left a note. Well, there's no time to waste. We better start combing the tub. Yes, it's a lucky thing he hasn't any money. He won't be able to get very... Oh, my goodness, he's got his allowance in $2.90. What about his school savings bank? Here it is, and look, it's been blitzkrieg. Huh? <laughs> oh, dear, that makes a lot of difference. It means he's got the means to go quite a distance. Oh, Uncle Maud, what are we going to do? Well, go right after him. Yeah, but which way will we go? Yes, which way will we go? Well, if it was me, I'd head south. Bertie, quit complaining about the weather and try to be some help. <laughs> Now, where will we start? Oh, poor Leroy. If we don't find him. Now, Marjorie, you mustn't get excited. You must be keep calm and cool. Uh, I mean, cool and calm. <laughs> I'll write down a few possibilities. This pencil won't write. That ain't no pencil. That's your cigar. Yeah? <laughs> well, then where's my pencil? You smoking it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, let's not get excited now, folks. Let me think. Oh, I know. There's only one way to head off our wandering boy. What's that, Uncle Moore? We'll have to notify the police. The police? Yes. They can send out a teletype all over the state and pick up Leroy before you can say calling all cars. Oh, but I hate to think of Leroy winding up in some police station. Yeah, he might not like it if we had him heaved into pokey. Huh? <laughs> I don't like it myself, but there's a lot worse places he might land. Well, there's no time to lose. Come on, Marjorie. I better phone right now and tell him our little boy, Blue. Oh, dear. <laughs> We only knew why he ran away. Oh, I tried to figure it out, Marjorie, but it's a complete mystery to me. I keep asking myself, Throckmorton, what could you have done that you could have made Leroy run away from home? And then I keep answering myself, I don't know. <laughs> well, here goes. Oh, I hope we can keep it out of the papers. Yes, yeah, stop being nervous, my dear. Just watch me. Uh, hello, police department? I wish to report a missing nephew. His name is Leroy Forrester. Yes, He's 13 years old, but he's tall for his size. I mean, he's old for his age. How tall? Oh, well, let me see. He comes to about up to here on me. Oh. <laughs> I forgot, officer. You can't see me, huh? I meant he comes up, up all to most of my shoulder. Yeah. How tall am I? What does that matter? I'm not lost. <laughs> Is that so? No, see here, mister. Uncle, now don't get so excited. Here, yeah. give me the phone. Yeah. Hello, police? My brother left home early this morning. Uh, hello? Oh, the police department. Well, at last. We've been waiting around here on tenterhooks. No, no, tenterhooks. T-E-N, never mind. Have you found him? Yes? Yes? Oh, well, that's something anyway. Thank you. Goodbye. They found Leroy, Uncle Mort. Not exactly. They've located a bakery wagon driver who gave him a lift out of town this morning in three cream puffs. Which way was he going? Uh, west, on the Watertown Road. In fact, Leroy told the man he was headed for Watertown. Then come on, Uncle Mort. That's where we're going. Yes. Maybe we can even find him before the police pick him up. Uh, Bertie, you stay here and answer the telephone in case the police or Leroy should call. Yes, and I'll keep my ear glued to the bell and you keep your eyes glued to the road. Yeah. Now take your time, Uncle Mort. Don't rush, though. I'm not rushing. I'm just trying to keep up with you. Are you sure you know the way to Watertown, Uncle? Oh, yes. I could drive to Watertown with my eyes shut. Sometimes I think that's the way you do all your driving. Yeah. <laughs> do you know, Uncle... This is the longest shortcut I've ever traveled on. You're right, Marjorie. And the next time you hear your Uncle Mort say I know a shortcut, please tap me on the skull with the nearest hammer. Oh, it isn't. It isn't your fault. You were only trying to save time getting to Leroy. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I can't understand this. 
This road was all right the last time I traveled on it. When was that? Uh, let me see. It was the year I bought my moon roadster. Well, no wonder the road's bad. Must be 15 years since my moon came over this mountain. (laughs) Well, we should hit the Watertown Highway in another few minutes. Yes. And once we're on the main road, I'll show you... Oh! Oh! Oh, great jumping jeeps. Uh, flat tire. Oh, dear. Look at that. A blowout. My last good tire, too. Will I remember Pearl Harbor? (laughs) Have you got a spare? A spare? Oh, yes, here in the back. I better work fast if I want to get a change before dark, though. Yes. Now, where's that key? Oh, no, that's the one to my locker at the YMCA. Uh, This one's for the padlock on my diary. Uh, Could this one? No, no. This one doesn't fit. What's wrong, Uncle? I can't find the key to the rear compartment. (coughs) And it won't open. Yeah, I guess I'll have to break off the lock with a hammer. Oh, I hate to see you do that. Huh? Well, shut your eyes because I'm going to do it. <laughs> oh, no, I can't. You can? No, I just remembered. The hammer's in the rear compartment with the tire. <laughs> oh, now what do we do? Could you use a rock instead of a hammer? A rock? Oh, of course. Should be one somewhere around here. Always is when you don't need one. <laughs> oh, I found one. How's this, Uncle Mort? Oh, splendid. Yeah, that rock looks like it's been through a lot, including Mrs. Uppington's window. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, thank you very much, my dear. Yeah, I wish Leroy wouldn't run away from home. It's kind of hard on my automobile. There. Now if I can pry up the lid. Yeah, yeah, I've got it. Don't take me more than, no oh, palpitating priorities. Some scoundrel of a so-and-so stole my spare tire. <laughs> Hello. Is this Slim's garage in Jacksonburg? Yeah, this is Slim speaking. Oh, well, my name is Gildersleeve, Slim. I'm calling from, uh, Marjorie. What's the name of this place? Joe Hogg's Hot Dog. And good, too. It's uh, from Joe's Hot Dog's Good. I mean, uh, Hog Hog's Place on the Watertown Road. Yeah, I know where you are. What's your trouble? I had a blowout about two miles back on the shortcut from Summerfield. They told me here you might be able to fix me up with a used tire in the tube. What size tire do you use? Uh, 7 by 15. Those are scarce, brother. If, haven't you got one? No. I might be able to get you one somewhere here in Jacksonburg, but not till tomorrow. Oh, tomorrow. That means I'll have to get somebody to drive me to Watertown tonight. If, what'll I do about my car? I'll send out and have it towed in here and try and get your tire in the morning. Uh, towed in. Oh, that's fine. Well, I'll be coming back by way of Jacksonburg tomorrow, I hope. If, see you then. Goodbye. Oh, Marjorie, have you got that small change ready for me? Here you are, Uncle Mark. Oh, thanks. Hello, operator? Huh? Oh, Oh, you've got that Summerfield number, huh? Oh, thanks. How much is it? Eh, all right, here it goes. Eh, bells, even. A Gildersleeve resident. Oh, hello, Bertie. Uh, this is Mr. Gildersleeve. Yes, but did you catch up with Leroy yet? Uh, no, Bertie, we've had a blowout. Oh, that's bad. Yes, and somebody stole our spare tire. That's bad. Uh, How about using that jalopy of yours? That's baddest of all. Huh? Uh, But, Bertie, we can't get another tire until morning. Uh, Couldn't you drive out here so we could continue to Watertown in that little uh, car of yours? Well, that's purely problematical, but I'm willing to take a chance. It appeals to my sporting instincts. What do you mean, Bertie? Well, this heap of mine is strictly ultra knock, non brake, unclutched, and anti hill climbing. Well, take it easy, Bertie, but hurry up. Okay, okay. Where are you? Uh, we're at a hot dog stand called Hogs Inn. Uh, about ten miles this side of Jacksonburg. I'll be there fast as I can. Oh, come to think about it, I know a shortcut. Good. No, no, no. Not the shortcut. Go the long way around. It's much quicker. <laughs> We'll hear from the great Gildersleeve again in just a moment. But first, I'm sure you mothers and housewives realize that you have a defense job, too. Yes, it's to serve your families plenty of good-tasting, nourishing food. Food that builds your family's muscle and morale. Well, parquet margarine, the delicious modern margarine made by Kraft, can be a big help to you in doing that job. You see, parquet margarine is so downright delicious, it adds delicate extra flavor to all kinds of foods. Yes, serve it generously at the table. Use it in baking. It's a genuine flavor shortening. 
Use it as a seasoning for hot vegetables, for pan frying, too. You'll find parquet margarine's delightful flavor gives real lift to all your meals. What's more, parquet margarine itself is so wonderfully good for your family. Parquet is a nourishing and wholesome energy food, and every pound contains 9,000 units of important vitamin A. So tomorrow, add delicious economical parquet margarine to your shopping list. Remember, it's parquet, P-A-R-K-A-Y, the margarine that's made by Kraft. Let's join the great Gildersleeve again as he, Marjorie, and Bertie continue their search for the missing Leroy. Bertie, who did you buy this car from, Rochester? No, sir. My pappy gave me this car. He bought it around about the time Mr. Roosevelt was elected. I bet it was Teddy Roosevelt. Yeah, I wouldn't doubt that, Marjorie. It certainly is a rough rider. Uh, please don't drive so fast. <laughs> Please don't drive so fast, Mr. Gillespie. When you goes over 30 miles an hour, the windshield has a tendency to slip down into the driver's lap. Well, uh, what does it do at 40? It don't do 40. <laughs> and don't blow the horn, because that blows the light. Yeah. <laughs> well, if we don't go any faster than this, Leroy will have time to raise a beard, and we'll never recognize him. Yeah. The only way we can get there any faster is to get out of this thing and walk. We're doing all right. Look, this seems to be a city we're coming into. You think it might be Watertown? Oh, no, pretty. Watertown's still 100 miles away. This must be Jacksonburg. Why, it's taken us half an hour to travel 10 miles. Slow down, Uncle Mort. There seems to be a wreck up ahead. Can't be any worse than this one we're in. <laughs> Why, George, you're right, Marjorie. Say, look at that truck on the wrong side of the street. Yeah, and there's a car turned upside down. Oh. Careful of the crowd, Uncle. You better go slower. I am. You just don't notice the change, my dear. Well, there's one fellow who won't have to worry about tires anymore. Uh, tires. Maybe I better stop. What's wrong, Uncle Moore? Nothing. That car is the same model as mine. I can use those tires. Hey, come on, let's find out. Uh, excuse me. Uh, can I squeeze through, please? Oh, I just barely did. Thank you. Uh, pardon me, mister. Uh, come on, Marjorie. Yeah. Well, by George, this is lucky. I was right. Those tires are seven uh, by 15. They are? Yes. The rest of the car is so badly smashed up, I'll bet the owner will sell me one or two. Well, you better find him quick. That tow car might haul it away any minute. Oh, tow car. Oh, yes. Uh, I wonder who the owner is. No, no, no. It was all the truck driver's fault. You don't have to take my word for it. Look at the skid marks. Huh? Oh, say, that must be the owner, Marjorie. Now, you two wait here. This is my golden opportunity. Uh Uh-huh. Well, I would make my blood water when I think of it. A big truck like that zooming down a hill. Yeah, uh, excuse me, excuse me, sir. Uh, but could I talk privately to you for a moment? Oh, me? Yeah. Sure, sure. Come on over here. Oh, thanks very much. Ah, uh, what is it, friend? Uh, look, mister, your car is wrecked. But, uh... The only thing worth salvaging are a couple of the tires. But... I need tires like that. But... Uh, you undoubtedly need money. Yeah, but... Uh, how much do you want for the two best tires? Oh, me? Yes, you, brother. How about $15 for the pair of them? Now, wait a minute. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, all right. <laughs> That was just a feeler, bud. Uh, Twenty dollars? Twenty dollars, huh? What's the most you'll pay? Twenty-five dollars, but thirty dollars is positively as high as I'll go. Okay, give me the thirty. Well, all right, here you are. Uh, Ten, twenty, twenty-five, thirty. Now, suppose you take them off. I want the right front and the left rear. No, no. They're your tires now. You take them off. Huh? Yeah, I got a phone call to make. So long, mister, and thanks. Uh, you're welcome, indeed. Oh, uh, Marjorie, uh, Bertie. Yes, Uncle Moore? I made a deal with the owner of that wreck for two tires. We'll take them to Slim's garage and put them on my car. Okay, I'll get the tie tools out of my car. Yeah, come on, Marjorie. I want to show you what I bought. Yeah. Uh, excuse me, young man. Uh, pardon me, sir. Aren't we lucky to find a wreck with the right size tires, Uncle Moore? Yes. Well, here they are. Not exactly new, but worth their weight in sugar these days. <laughs> uh, here he is, Mr. Gillsleeve. Now, be careful and don't break this wrench. Yeah, I won't. Because it's a very important tool. Huh? I not only use it to change tires, but also as the final and conclusive argument in traffic disputes. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I understand. I never took a tire off a car that was upside down before, though. <laughs> uh, this one's a little tough. Uh, hold the wheel, Bertie. You hold the wheel and I'll unscrew the lug. Oh, uh, well, all right. I guess holding the wheel is the harder job of the two anyway. Uh, here. Can I help you, Uncle Moore? Uh, no, no. Bertie and I have it, haven't we, Bertie? Yes, sir. Yeah. 
Now be careful, Uncle, or you'll get your fingers dirty. Yeah. Yeah, who said that? Oh, don't pay any attention, Uncle Moore. Just some fresh fellow. Yeah, by George. If, if I was sure which one popped off, I'd pop him. Here, here, Bert. He let me do that. Boy, I got them all off already. Huh? Now, you just help me lift it down. Yes, of course. Here we go. <laughs> what you gonna do now, Uncle? Go hook rolling? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Did you see who said that, Marjorie? Oh, never mind those street corner loafers, Uncle Moore. All right. No, no, Bertie. I'll take the other one off myself. Uh, give me that tire wrench. Uh, thanks. Are there any more remarks in the gallery? I'm going to unscrew a loose nut or two. Uh, <laughs> What's the matter, boys? Cat got your tongue? Come on, Uncle Mort. We've got to hurry. Yes. Oh, of course. Yeah. Hey, wait a minute. What do you think you're doing, buddy? Oh, hello, officer. I had a blowout this evening and no spare tire, and I happened to come across this wreck here, and it had the same size tires. Well, wasn't I lucky? I'll say you was, until I arrived. Yeah. What have you got to do with it? Well, if you aren't the nerviest car stripper I ever seen. Nerviest car stripper I ever saw, officer. <laughs> what do you mean, I'm a car stripper? As if you didn't know. Standing there with your face, the picture of innocence, framed in a stolen tire. Stolen? I bought these tires from the owner of this car. I've got witnesses. Uh, you boys saw me paying them, didn't you, boys? Well, I saw you talking to some guy, but he wasn't the owner of that car. Uh, how do you know he wasn't? Because he ran out of the pool room with the rest of us when we heard the crash. Oh, what? Uh, do you mean that I was taken in? You weren't, buddy, but you're gonna be. Come on with me. Take your hands off of me, copper. I'll hammer you into an ashtray. No, 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 Uncle Mort. <laughs> oh, Marjorie. You and Bertie had better drive on to Watertown and keep a sharp lookout for Leroy. I think I'm going to be detained here. All right, if you think that's best. Yeah. Come on, buddy. We're going to join the station wagon set. The station? What do you mean? I'm going to phone the station to send over the wagon, and then we'll be all set. Now, innocent as a child, eh? I suppose you were just using those tires as teething rings. Yes. Sergeant, I bought those two tires. I paid for them. What's the use of trying to convince a numbskull, fuzzy brain, flatfoot? Uh, are you insinuating that I'm a, a flatfoot? If the shoe fits, wear it. <laughs> I don't want to hang around this crook's coop any longer. I want some action. Okay, you're going to get it. For tonight, I'm going to put you in a nice room where no nasty tires can come in and run off with you. Uh, you mean in the cell? No, all our cells are full. I'm putting you in a detention room. But what's the difference between that and a cell? We put curtains over the bars. Uh, you can't do this to me. Uh, who do you think I am? A common criminal? Yes. Now, shut up. What's your name? Uh, my name. What's my... Oh, yeah. Let me see. M E C. Huh? Last name S-E-E. Huh? Oh, yes. That's right. <laughs> Dumbbell. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Lem E C, yeah. The E stands for Elmer. Okay, C. Okay, C. Yeah. Put C in the detention room. Okay. And you, Mister. Uh, C is the name. Ah, don't think you're fooling anybody. Give me a phony name like Lemmy C. Huh? I know it's an alias. Now run along. Uh, this way, buddy. Come on. Oh. We're just sticking you in here till you decide to come clean with us. I have come clean. And by George, before I'm through with you, you're going to be washed up. In you go. Hey, kid, you got company. Uh, hello, young man. Uh, uh, Leroy. Uncle Mort. Gee, I'm glad to see you here. I'm glad to see you too, my boy, but not here. What? <laughs> boy, you must have had a lot of pull with the police to get in to visit me. Oh, I forgot you were the one who told them to pick me up. Yes, Leroy. We just couldn't let you run away from home like that. And this was the quickest way to get in touch with you. Well, let's get out of here and go home. Yes, let's get out of here. Oh, Leroy. I'm afraid we can't do that for a little while. Well, why not, Uncle? I'll explain later. Meanwhile, young man, I, wanna, I want you to tell me why you ran away from home. Oh, gee, Uncle Mort. All I was going to do was enlist in the Navy. You in the Navy? Leroy, you're just 13 years old. Well, sure, but I'm awfully big for my age. Yeah. And if I went to Watertown or someplace where nobody knows me, I bet I could get in. But why? In your note, you said you couldn't stand it any longer. Uh, were you unhappy at home, Leroy? No, it's just that I can't stand around doing nothing while our country's at war. I want to do my share. Well, that's a wonderful spirit, my boy. It makes me proud of you. But Uncle Sam can't use boys your age in the Navy. Oh, but I can work hard. I want to be in there. Oh, you just don't understand. I do understand, my boy. You think it's easy for me to watch younger men go off to fight our battles while I have to stay behind? Here we are. You're too young and I'm too old. But we each have a job to do. 
Every one of us. From the president to the boy in the school, Leroy. But, gee, Uncle Mort, right now school seems awfully trivial. Leroy, it's the millions of trivial things, well done, that's going to win this war for us. Like the farmer who grows more food, and the factory hand who produces more equipment, and the housewife who makes everything go a little farther, even the children who gather up waste paper and scrap iron, and all of us who buy bonds and contribute our time and money and prayers and inspiration. We're all in the army, Leroy. The army that stands back of our soldiers and our sailors and our flyers. And the better we do our job, the sooner they're going to finish theirs. Hey, Unc, wake up. It's morning. I've been awake all night, Leroy. This mattress must be stuffed with old prisoners. (laughs) And Leroy... Just stop calling me Unc. I don't want it ever known that Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve spent the night in the calaboose suspected of highway robbery. Gee, we're both in a spot. Huh? You can't get out till you can prove you paid for those tires, and I can't get out till you can prove you're you. Uh, hmm? Oh. Well, maybe they'll let me call Judge Hooker. If they do, uh, shh, we're about to have a visitor. Okay, kid, come on. And bring your things. Your sister's outside to take you home. Gee, thanks. Well, so long, uh, uh, mister. Uh-huh. I'll do everything I can to help you get free. Oh, thank you, Sonny. Yep, wait a minute. Don't close that door, officer. I demand to see the desk sergeant. What, again? Oh, all right. But this is the last time, see? Yes, they can't keep me here unless I'm charged. I know my rights. I didn't study commercial law in night school two years for nothing. <laughs> Yeah, sister's in the chief's office over there. Oh, hey, go ahead, Sonny. I'm going to talk to the sergeant. Hey, Sarge, he wants to see you again. What is it this time? Sergeant, either you release me at once or I'm going to sue you and Casey and the chief of police and the whole town of Jacksonburg for a million dollars apiece. Now, calm down, Mr. C. Uh, I tried to trace the ownership of that car you stripped, and the garage man who's got it now can't find the owner to sign a complaint against you. Oh, why should he? He got his tires back, and I want out. Well, under the circumstances, I guess we'll have to release you. Well, that's better. And a lucky thing for you, too. Now, you see here, mister, if anybody's lucky, it's you. You're awfully lucky that guy ain't here to prosecute you. What guy are you talking about? The owner of that wrecked car. A fellow from Summerfield by the name of Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve. Greg Gildersleeve will be with us again in a few minutes. But right now, I suppose some of you used margarine in the last war. Well, I don't know, of course, how you felt about margarine then, but I do know that modern margarine is so much better that there's just no comparison. Take parquet margarine, for instance, the delicious modern margarine made by Kraft. Why, one taste of parquet's delicate, appetizing goodness will convince you how wonderfully delicious it is. Yes, in flavor and texture, parquet margarine is as different from old-time margarines as night is from day. You see, parquet margarine is made by Kraft, and surely that's a guarantee of quality and fine flavor. Parquet is a wholesome vegetable margarine, made by modern methods that just weren't possible in the old days. And to make parquet even better for you, Kraft adds important vitamin A to parquet margarine, 9,000 units to every single pound. So find out tomorrow how good modern margarine can be by trying delicious parquet margarine made by Kraft. Serve it at the table, use it for cooking too, but be sure to ask your dealer for parquet, P-A-R-K-A-Y. It's the margarine made by Kraft. Uh, Sorry, folks, our time's up. Good night. Original music heard on this program was composed and conducted by William Randolph. This is Jim Bannon speaking for the Kraft Cheese Company and inviting you to be with us again next week at the same time for the further adventures of The Great Gildersleeve. This program came to you from Hollywood. This is the National Broadcasting Company. <laughs>